What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPettes? Today we're going to go over the Beretta 1301 Tactical. Now this shotgun has been around for uh, quite a bit now and this specific one here I have owned for about two years somewhere around there. This one here is the Gen 1. I'm going to really quick go over the features that you're getting on the Gen 1 and what they actually changed on the Gen 2. I, unfortunately I don't have a Gen 2 in front of me to kind of give you a side-by-side -side comparison, but I pretty much know what they have actually changed on the Gen 2, and then I'm gonna just go over what I'm going to change on this one here, because this is pretty much the last time you're gonna see this thing stock, and I'm going to do a complete overhaul on this whole shotgun. And overall, I'm just gonna give uh, my opinions on this whole gun here, and what I found that I didn't like on this shotgun and what I really like on this shotgun. Also really quick, I'd like to thank the YouTube sponsor Atlantic Firearms for sponsoring my YouTube endeavors. They are an online pew store that sells all types of cool stuff and uh, I purchased a lot from them and they are basically going to let me borrow guns or uh, send me guns at a discount to show off to you guys um, as time goes on. But thank you so much to Atlantic Firearms. But let's get right into it. This is an 18 inch barrel. And one of the biggest differences between the Gen 1 compared to the Gen 2 is on the Gen 2, it does come with threads on the inside of the barrel so that way you can add chokes to it. Unfortunately, on the Gen 1s, you do not have the option to put chokes. It's just a straight uh, smooth barrel on this one here. Moving on up, you do have your front uh, iron sight there, and you do have a rear iron sight that is adjustable for windage and elevation. While shooting this guy with iron sights, I found it really easy to basically keep both my eyes open and aim through that hole and or that peep sight and look at the front sight and find that front sight extremely fast. Moving on down, this is the only upgrade that I did to this shotgun because when I bought this shotgun, it had a, I forgot what the, mag capacity this was maybe five five plus one somewhere around there but anyways the nordic components nordic nordic mag tube extension that came with this little mount here that has a 1913 adapter on the right side and it has a um let me show you here it has a qd attachment on the other side that was one of the main things that i wanted to get right off the bat because like i said when i bought this guy it did not have that extension on there so i just wanted the extra i think two rounds and that nordic extension is a really nice quality aluminum build all the way around didn't have any issues with that while i've owned it and i've bought that literally right when i bought this so i've had that piece on there for the the past two years moving on back you do have this generic plastic grip that is checkered all the way through from the front to the back here at the bottom part. So you have that part, the middle part, and this part. It's very grippy. I can get a good purchase on there every time I'm shooting. I don't have any slippage issues whatsoever while I'm shooting that. But that is one of the things that I'm gonna change on here. Um, a majority of the upgrades that I'm going to get for this 1301 is going to be from Eridus Industries. Again, I have no affiliation with Eridus Industries but I'm going to purchase their parts because I think they make really badass parts for the 1301. And honestly, I don't really think there's a lot of companies out there that make aftermarket parts for 1301s. I think this is kind of a, I don't know if it's underrated or I, I don't know what, but this, I, I wanna see a lot more aftermarket parts for this 1301. Specifically, I want to get a um, handguard that has a shroud that can go over this barrel. Because when I do shoot, I do this whole C clamp grip thing here. And when I'm shooting fairly quickly, this barrel does tend to heat up. Any of you that are watching this that make parts for uh, 1301, please make something for this guy that has a shroud over or an adapter or something. But as of now, an Eridus Industries uh, adapter piece that I can put on the Magpul uh, MOE. It's a Magpul foreign, guys. I'll put up a picture right here somewhere so that way you can see that Magpul foreign. And then I'll add a picture at the end that I want this thing to look basically identical to. Moving on back, you do have this top 1913 rail. Now, this is another thing that they changed on the Gen 2s. On the Gen 1s, this is a plastic top 1913 piece. And I understand why they went to an aluminum or metal one just because when I got this one, it did get loose a couple times. I did put Loctite on it now. Uh, it hasn't gotten loose on me again since I put Loctite on there. But 
when I first got it from the factory, it did get loose on me after like about 50 rounds or so. Um, I'll have to look through my phone right now, but I feel like I could find a video of when that happened and I'll put it somewhere here. So check this out. That plastic rail got loose. I think I gotta upgrade that, right? works even though it's loose but yeah that plastic rail has to go i do not want that on there anymore I'm, again i'm going to go with the eridus mounts eridus makes dedicated uh optic plates for this that i can put like whatever red dot that i'm going to slap on here now moving on to the most important part here this is a gas operated system that beretta is calling their blink system now, Breda claims that this is shooting or cycling 30 to 36 percent faster than the competition out there. So like your other semi-auto shotguns. And I believe them. That's one of the favorite things that I like about this gun. This is my favorite semi-auto shotgun to date. And I don't like to throw that term out there lightly. I have a bunch of guns. I don't really like to say something is my favorite just because it's like, trying to choose your favorite child, right? I really love this shotgun, this semi-auto shotgun, semi-autos across the board. This is my favorite semi-auto shotgun, even though I want to upgrade uh, quite a bit on this, just for the fact that it can cycle basically as fast as I can pull that damn trigger. <laughs> I just want to mention this thing is extremely light usually when it comes to getting a light shotgun and shooting it with whatever load you're shooting out there other than like birdshot or something like that it's a hard time trying to control that recoil and trying to get good split time on this one here even though it's really light it, it tames that recoil very nice where I can do my follow-up shots or get good splits on this shotgun and stay on target. I don't know how else to explain it, guys, other than telling you to go out and shoot it and try to pull the trigger as fast as you can and try to control that recoil under those fast split times that you're going to be shooting, and you're going to see the difference between this one and another semi-auto shotgun. Now, enough of the way it operates and how it cycles and all that stuff, but this charging handle is extremely large it's very nice to grab onto but i've never really been a fan of how it looks i mean it doesn't really in terms of functionality wise it's great but in my brain it just gives me uh ribbed for your pleasure type vibes and uh i'm most likely going to swap that out hopefully i can have a big chunk of uh round metal there kind of like an ak that i can just charge back but as of now that thing does its job great. Another difference that you're gonna see on the 1301 Gen 1 compared to the Gen 2 is the bolt release. Now the bolt release on this one is just a floating paddle basically. And a lot of complaints were about like double feeding I think or where um, this would accidentally get like depressed or some sort of that nature. I haven't had an issue with it so far. But uh, I guess you can accidentally knock that guy and uh, charge around or release the next round uh, into the chamber without wanting to. But Eridus does make a fix for that that kind of keeps it from accidentally getting pushed that I am going to upgrade on that as well. On the Gen 2s, they already come with like this shroud thing that kind of keeps it from being accidentally pressed. But what I do like about that bolt release is that it's extremely large, so it's super easy for me to get a um, plus one reload or a emergency reload and tap that uh, bolt release.
And speaking on reloads, that's going to be another upgrade that I'm doing to this is going to be a side saddle also by Eridus, or I think it's by Eridus unless they sell it, but it's going to be their aluminum side saddle that I can slap on here as well. Now, moving on down to the loading port, the loading port is uh, just to me an average shotgun loading port It's nothing to be wowed over. Unlike when I went to the uh, Beretta booth at SHOT Show, I looked at their new Beretta A300, I believe that's what it's called, the A300 Ult Ultima. Ultima. That one had a nice wide and uh, cut, I guess, recessed loading port. Kind of like how you see what uh, three gun uh, shotgun shooters do to their shotguns. They kind of grind everything down here and make it a extremely wide loading port so that way they can get their uh, quad lows going in there. I really, really hope that they're going to take that design from the A300 and put it on the 1301 because that to me, I think would be a complete and perfect semi-auto shotgun. But on this one, I didn't really have any issue loading it, guys. All it really takes is practice. But again, those details that they added to the A300, it's just gonna help you a little bit more just in case you do kind of fumble a reload or something. Now, moving on back to the trigger, the trigger on this 1301 is extremely nice. I don't think I'm gonna do anything to this trigger. I really like the way it is from the factory, but it is not too heavy nice and crisp it is a really nice trigger and for somebody that's going to use this for self-defense or a home defense shotgun i wouldn't recommend doing anything to a trigger to lighten it up and stuff like that you don't want to have a an accident or uh it's really um with the recoil coming out of this guy, you don't want to accidentally bump fire that trigger and fire off two shots when you didn't really mean to. Now, lastly, the stock is just your normal plastic synthetic stock where you have your checkering on the uh, front portion of it here. Again, I don't have an issue with the furniture that's on it now. I've had this again for two years, never really complained about it, but I think since I've had it for so long, it's time for an upgrade. And the stock is another upgrade that I'm gonna slap on here. I'm gonna get the Aridus adapter as well and slap the Magpul uh, buttstock on this guy as well. And I'll throw up a picture now that shows the complete firearm and how I'm gonna make this thing look. But there you go guys, went through all the little details on this. Would I recommend you buying the Gen 1 over the Gen 2? Probably not. When it comes to the prices, I, I feel like they're very close in price. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're getting quite a few uh, things that I need to pay for now that you will be getting on the uh, Gen 2. So like the bolt, the rail and the biggest thing is the threaded barrel for the chokes. Realistically, if I were to buy a 1301 all over again, I'd go straight to the Gen 2 just for those upgrades and for the fact that I'd be able to put different chokes in it. Even though I'm not going to be utilizing them now, I would 100% prefer to have those options in the future if I were to ever go hunting or want a better pattern. As far as reliability goes, this thing has been extremely reliable. It's eaten everything I've thrown at it and I have around maybe 1500 or so maybe more maybe less and I don't really know the exact round count I just know it's upwards of a thousand just because every time that I've shot it it's been maybe 200 rounds at a time and I've taken this out quite a few times with my friends and we would shoot clays and stuff like that and I would shoot maybe 150 to 100 rounds in a single day uh, just by bringing this out and messing it uh, messing around with it but I would 100% guarantee that it's upwards of like 1200 rounds the other 250 rounds I put in through one day of this whole filming and stuff like that and testing it out and stuff somebody that shoots 250 rounds in a single day is a lot of uh, rounds to be shooting through a shotgun it hurts guys it really hurts to shoot that many rounds through a shotgun like the most I really have in me is like maybe 150 rounds depending on what load you're shooting i was just shooting bird shot all day i have shot slugs out of this and buckshot and all those other other uh, rounds to this but so if you shoot more than that in a single day i give it to you because my shoulder definitely took a beating and also to be completely 100 percent transparent with you guys i did not run this completely dry within those two years that i've owned it or these two years that i've owned it when I went out and shot these last 250 rounds, I didn't do anything to it. I just shot those 250 rounds and it ran flawlessly. Previous whatever thousand round that I had through it, I did put drops of oil in it and uh, I didn't take out the bolt and clean it or anything like that. 
but I did put oil in it. That was because I wasn't doing this whole YouTube stuff and I wasn't testing out my guns and usually in all my guns I usually put a couple drops of oil in it just to uh, keep it running smoothly. But if I were to add, if I didn't put oil or anything into this, I think it would run those thousand rounds or over a thousand rounds completely fine without me cleaning it uh, if you run good ammunition through it. But overall guys, that's all I pretty much have to say about this 1301 here. I'm going to do a little bit more testing on it or I'll probably do a whole video that's just dedicated to what upgrades you should get because it's easier for me to show you what's on it than to just throw pictures up wherever I can. Let you guys know how they actually perform, right? Why are you getting upgrades to see if they perform better than the stock version? And aside from the upgrades, I'm going to get my hands on the Beretta 13, uh, not 13, the Beretta A300 and compare it directly to this 1301 and see which one I would choose out of the two. But other than that, guys, do you have those upgrades on a 1301 or on your 1301? I'm pretty sure they've been out for quite a while, so a lot of people have them now. What have you guys done to your 1301? Because I'm very interested in hearing that. Do you think Mike or Beretta's claim that this is one of the fastest or 30% faster cycling shotguns out there is true? Is there any other shotgun out there that's going to be faster cycling than this one? Because I'd love to check it out. Go ahead and drop a comment down below on your thoughts on all that. But for now... Thank you all for sticking around. I love you all. Catch you in the next one.